in the land of Tongi Magoo, with jungles deep and wild, a mother monkey played didgeridoo as she rocked her child. Mommy, mommy! Wept the ape. I want to go outside. This musty nest, I must escape and see the forest wide. Hush now, dear, said his mom. It's not safe for you to roam. It's best for us to remain calm and stay safely at home. But he was not deterred and quietly slipped away. He did his best not to be heard. I just want to go out and play. But what he didn't realize was that high up overhead, a hungry eagle soared the skies and wanted to be fed. What's this I see? The eagle spake. A monkey meal for two? They taste so good like tender steak, so delicate to chew. And as the eagle dropped its claws and reached out for his prey, the mother monkey bared her jaws and snatched her son away. There goes dinner, the eagle moaned, and as he swooped out of sight, that was too close, the monkey groaned and held her child tight. And so they both stayed in the nest until the babe did grow. In the meantime, their time was best, spent listening to the radio. Hey Gabby, what's up? Hey Artie, not much. I was just reading books about how monkeys live in the jungle. It's pretty neat. Did you know some monkeys make nests like birds? Really? Why? Monkeys don't lay eggs. They don't, right? They're mammals, Artie. Of course they don't lay eggs. Platypuses are mammals too, and they lay eggs. Touche. Good morning, Artie. How's it going? Pretty good. Zach's getting ready to go back to college, and so I get my room back. Yeah? Must be nice to see him again. It's all right. He's been nicer to me lately, but I think that's because he's trying to impress his girlfriend. Apparently, he thinks girls like it when a guy is nice to kids. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. Hey guys. Good morning, Sage. Is everything okay? Yeah, I guess. My mom and I had a disagreement this morning. Oh yeah, that happens with me and my mom all the time. She usually gets over it in time for lunch, though. What was it this time? Getting a raise on your allowance? No. I went to a friend's house without her permission, and stayed really late without checking in. Oof. Not good. Yeah, she texted me a bunch of times, and I had my phone off, so I didn't see any of them. Needless to say, I was in trouble last night. But I thought you were having an issue with her this morning. Yeah. This morning, I learned that my punishment was that I had to keep my phone on me and text her every half an hour to let her know where I am and who I'm with and what we're doing. Hmm, sounds like a fair price to pay. For a whole week, though, Mr. Jacobs? It's crazy! She's lucky that we have unlimited texting on our phones, or this would cost a fortune. What was that? A reminder. Hmm. At Mr. Jacobs' garage with Gabby, Artie, and Mr. Jacobs. What are we doing? I was going to go get some milk and cookies. And I was going to listen to the radio. Okay, cool. Listening to the radio. Shall I start it up? Sorry, guys. Gotta text my mom. She's really making you do that every half hour? If I want to be able to go anywhere other than my room for a month, Artie. All right. Who's up for some cookies and milk? I am. Help yourself, Gabriella. Anyone else? I'll take some. And you, Sage? Just a second. Eating cookies. All right. Thanks, Mr. Jacobs. You know, I don't know if I would have chosen this whole texting punishment, Sage. It might be better just to stay home for a month. After last year? No way. I've already spent months shut up in the house. There's no way I'm going back to that. Still, it's a bit of a pain. Tell me about it. This has to be the most unfair thing I've ever had to deal with as a punishment. No, I don't know. It seems pretty fair to me. Of course you would say that. Should have known you'd take my mom's side. Grown-ups have to stick together. <laughs> it might seem that way. But I think if you look at it, this punishment is actually a good way for you never to forget to let your mom know where you're going and that you're safe. Every half hour? I think that's a little extreme, Mr. Jacobs. Gabby's right. I think my mom would get annoyed that I was texting her that much. That's not quite what I meant, Artie. The lesson that Sage's mother wanted to get across is that communication is important, and by taking it to this extreme, she'll never forget. Still, it's kind of weird. Perhaps. But sometimes parents have to get a little creative. But why can't they just let kids be kids and be free to make their own decisions? We're not dumb, you know. Oh, I, I do know that, Gabby. But I think something important to remember is that... Actually, I have a script that might be a more fun way to explain it. I'll be right back. Oh. 
Okay. I guess we'll be listening to the radio while we wait for him to get back. And now, from the garage of Lionel Jacobs comes the fascinating drama, The Silly Signs, an adapted biblical teaching about authority. Once upon a time, in the small town of Tinkerton, a town hall meeting was in order. All right now, next on our agenda, we have Mr. Dinkledorf. Yes, thank you, town supervisor. I would like to bring up all of the signs we have around town. Signs? Yes, you know, the do not enter signs, the one way signs, and my least favorite, the ever unpopular stop signs. Okay, what's your point? I say, these signs are an affront to our personal liberties and freedoms. I say, if I want to enter, I should be allowed to. If I want to trespass, I should be free to do so. If I want to park at any time to the corner, I am well within my rights to do it. Interesting. What's your opinion, Chief Officer? I think the signs make sense and make it easier for our society to function. Ah, but she has no proof. Please, we will have order at this council. Sorry, Madam Town Supervisor. I suggest we give it a try. Let's take down all the signs in our town for a month. If things get better, maybe we'll consider keeping things this way. I have a bad feeling about this. And so the town took down all of the traffic signs and left them down for a month. After the month was up, the council reconvened and they discussed the situation. All right, next on our agenda, oh yes, the genius who started this mess, Mr. Dinkledorf. I think I'm detecting some sarcasm. I'm sure you are mistaken. Let's look at the safety reports here. Chief Officer? Thank you. This is a chart showing the amount of traffic accidents in our fair city. As you can see, we have had pretty safe streets for years. Until last month. What's your point? My point, Mr. Dingledorf, is that your proposal has turned our streets into a war zone. No one knows the speed limit. No one knows where to stop and where to yield. Cars are parking wherever they choose, to the point where, when ambulances and fire trucks are trying to get to the scenes of disasters, they can't because their roads are blocked completely. But at the same time, we are more free than we have ever been. I've heard enough. How soon can we get those traffic signs up? I've already got my men on it now. Glad to hear it. The moral is that God has put people in charge of us not to take away our freedom or make our lives miserable, but to keep us safe and help us when we need help. He tells us to obey our parents, our pastors, and our leaders because it's their job to keep us safe. And when we don't, we aren't just doing the wrong thing. We could be making it easier for others and ourselves to get hurt. Hmm. You all have been rather quiet. Is everything okay? Yeah. We've just been thinking about the drama about the signs. It was a little weird. Honestly, what town would want to take down traffic signs? That's just a little too dangerous to be taken seriously. Perhaps, Artie. But it's no less dangerous than parents letting their kids do whatever they want. Okay, Mr. Jacobs. You've been saying that God gave us parents to keep us safe. But does the Bible tell us that? Or are you just making it up? Come on. It's Mr. Jacobs. He's probably got a bazillion verses memorized about it. (laughs) Well, I don't know about a bazillion, but I do know that passages like Ephesians 6, Romans 13, and Hebrews 13 all have a lot to say about this topic. Told you. He never says anything without having a Bible verse to back it up. That is unfortunately not true, Artie. But when it comes to the big important questions, I think that we have to rely on the Bible to give us a good place to start from. Yeah, I guess this whole respect your parents topic has something to do with last week's lesson, too. That's right, Sage. Last week? What are you talking about? Oh, we were just talking about when God gives us a command. It's not just so he can tell us what to do. It's so we can get the best out of life. When we do what our parents tell us, it's for the best as well. Oh, there's my phone again. This was a lot to think about, but I think I'm going to go now, Mr. Jacobs. Yeah, me too. I'm meeting up with Bailey, and we're going to hang out at the Old Forest Bridge. That sounds fun. All right. I'll see you kids later. Bye. Hold on. Leaving Mr. Jacob's garage, going to Old Forest Bridge. Wait for me! Hmm. I guess they won't be listening to any more programs then. Better turn it off until next time.